on behalf of 24HourAnswers.com, I welcome you to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to find the critical values of a rational function and recall a critical value or critical point, which we'll call c. x equals c exists when the derivative at c is equal to zero or the derivative at c does not exist. So we have this function here and we want to find the critical points or critical values for this function. I would recommend using the quotient rule here and if you've seen the videos on quotient rule, a little mnemonic or something to kind of help us remember is low d high minus high d low all over low low. What does that mean? F prime of x. Let's do low. That means we take this lower function, this bottom piece, and we leave it alone. So we have 2x plus 3. d high, that means we take the derivative of the upper function, the high function. So take the derivative of the top here. That's 2x minus high. Now we leave the top function alone. So x squared minus 2, that is our top function. d low, now we multiply by the derivative of the lower function, the bottom function. That is going to be 2 all over low low. That means we take the lower function and we multiply it times itself. So you can think of it as low squared. Therefore we have 2x plus 3 all squared. Now we found our derivative. Now we want to find some values of x and we can call them c such that the derivative is equal to 0 or the derivative does not exist. Well, the derivative does not exist when our denominator is equal to zero. So we can go ahead and address this part right here, which will give us a critical value, critical point. We can set this denominator equal to zero to find where the derivative does not exist. So therefore, taking 2x plus 3 and setting it equal to zero. You don't have to worry about the squared piece. Whatever makes this piece equal to zero, well, zero squared is still going to give you zero in the denominator. So solving that equation real quick, we subtract 3 and divide by 2. So therefore, x equals negative 3 halves. That is one of our c values. I'm just going to leave it as x, though. It doesn't really matter. Negative 3 halves is a critical point or a critical value for this function. So now let's focus on what makes this derivative equal to zero. That's where we can determine our other critical value or critical values. Now I just rewrote the 2x out front. I rewrote that 2 out front there. And let's go ahead and distribute here. And then we will talk about how to handle this denominator. We can simply multiply by it or quite honestly ignore it since we've already identified that critical value there that makes the denominator equal to zero. So we have zero equals 4x squared plus 6x. I'm distributing this to these two terms here. Now watch your signs here. We have minus 2x squared plus 4. Distributing that negative 2 to the x squared and to that negative 2 there as well. And then this is all over 2x plus 3 all squared. As mentioned earlier, we can go ahead and get rid of this right now. Technically what we're doing here to get rid of this denominator is we are multiplying both sides by that denominator, 2x plus 3 squared. Notice I am multiplying by that on both sides. Over here on the right hand side, that will cancel those out. And over here, 0 times that stuff is still going to give us 0. So now we have 0 equals, let's combine like terms, 4x squared minus 2x squared is 2x squared plus 6x and then plus the 4. Now we have a quadratic equation that we want to solve here. Since all of these coefficients and numbers here are even, we can go ahead and divide everything by 2. So 0 divided by 2 gives us 0. 2 divided by 2, we get an x squared. Dividing this by 2, we get 3x. And dividing this by 2, we get 2. This is a fairly quick quadratic for us to factor. Two numbers that multiply to give you a positive 2 and add to give you a negative 3 are going to be a positive 2 and a positive 1. Therefore, our two factors are going to be x plus 2 and x plus 1. You can always double check your factoring by multiplying these two binomials together and you should get this quadratic trinomial right here. The last step here is we take each one of these factors and we set them equal to zero. This is where your college algebra skills come into play. All of this factoring that we're doing, I mean everything from the derivative, after we found the derivative on down, all of this is college algebra. We get a critical value here of negative 2 and a critical value here of negative 1 once we solve these two equations here. 
Therefore, combining all of this stuff together, f of x has critical values of negative 2, negative 1, and negative 3 halves. The negative 3 halves came from this piece right here. I know that's kind of small, but that's what we are addressing here. There are three critical values here. Let's have a look over at Desmos to see these critical values in action. So here's f of x over in Desmos. And remember, two of our critical values, ironically, we're getting, don't worry about the y values here. What we're talking about are the x values. When x is negative one, we do have a critical value because the derivative is equal to zero there. We do have a horizontal tangent line right there when x is equal to negative one. Also, when x is equal to negative two, again, ignore the y value here, but when x is negative two, we also have a critical value here because we have another horizontal tangent line. Well, what about that other critical value? X equals negative three halves. Making this a little bit bigger so you can see it, a vertical asymptote is definitely going to be a place where f of x is not differentiable. A vertical asymptote, always, the function will not be differentiable at its vertical asymptote. And if you notice back here at the beginning, we could have found this vertical asymptote right here by setting the denominator equal to zero, which we did in the derivative, but we get the exact same x value. If you set this 2x plus 3 here equal to 0, you will get a value of x equals negative 3 halves, hence the vertical asymptote, hence a place where f of x is not differentiable. And please remember, a critical point, two things to consider, when the derivative is equal to 0 or when the derivative does not exist. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Links to our social media are in the description below.